Hi guys, this is Vaish from Vaish IAS and uh, we are going to continue our Satish Chandra series. So we have uh, done the first chapter in detail, I think in three parts we did it, okay. Akbar, uh, sorry not Akbar, uh, Babar, Humayu and uh, Sher Shah, okay. So the timeline is now around uh, 1555 and so uh, this textbook is also designed in such a way that it takes like uh, in a chronological way, okay. So it will be easy if you uh, watch it in order, okay. Don't watch it in random. and. Uh, so this uh, chapter is about Akbar and it's a lengthy chapter actually. So my 2025 pages are there and so I will be doing it again in three or four parts and uh, we'll try to categorize it in, uh, into different proper sections instead of uh, stopping it in midway or something. We'll uh, under different subheadings we'll categorize. So initially it will be like the beginning okay. Like Akbar uh, getting into the throne okay at the age of 13. You can see the image here I took this from the uh, movie okay. Uh, Jodha Akbar movie. I took it from there. So that movie, even though it is like revolving around the love story of uh, Jodha and Akbar and all, the initial, the first one hour, if you see, the script is actually uh, directly like line by line what is mentioned in this textbook. Okay, any history textbook of this uh, particular Akbar's assistant to throne, you will find the same thing. Okay, so this person here is the Bairam Khan. Okay, who because he is young, 13 years old, he is the one who is in charge of everything, and he is like making him the king. And then this is actually the scene of the Panipat War. Okay, second Panipat War. That is in 1556, immediately after Humayun's death. So that scene this is, and then after then he will be like uh, growing, and then around uh, uh, when he is the age of maturity, that time he starts then questioning the policies of Bayram Khan because he will be, you can see here. So he is actually like uh, if a war is over and if uh, the other uh, opposite side will be like a defeat or something, he will be uh, like killing them. Okay, he is not like considering them as like what to say a refuge or a prisoner of war or nothing. He will be like directly executing it. So it was like very harsh policies which uh, Bayram Khan followed. So Akbar was not like that. You will learn a lot about him in history optional, especially Akbar is a separate chapter itself. Okay, history option students should know in and about, uh, out about this person. Okay, Akbar personality of Akbar. Okay, before that I'll tell you one thing. The name Akbar. Okay, this Akbar is not his uh, actual name. His actual name is something like Jalaluddin Muhammad or something. Okay, and Akbar is something which he gets off when he is around 25, 30 years old. That time people call him Akbar. Okay, Akbar means great. So if you see like the in uh, the Islam thing, it ha it is there right that Allahu Akbar. That is like God is great. So it means greatness. Okay, Akbar in simple term, if you want to understand, it is great. So that is how he, his name is there. And that is how he is popularly known, Akbar the Great. Okay. So that is about a rough overview. Now we'll see the chapter and we'll just discuss about this accession to throne and his initial policies. Okay, maybe 1556 to 1570 or something when he is just maturing at that time. What was happening? What were the Mughal expansion policies? Okay, so we'll see it from the actual PDF itself as usual. So this is the chapter uh, consolidation of the Mughal Empire, age of Akbar. Okay. So we will see this, when Humayun was retreating from Bikaner, he was gallantly offered shelter and help by the Rana of Amarkot. Okay. So you know like uh, Sher Shah defeated Humayun in uh, the battle of uh, Chausa and battle of Kanauj in 1539 and 1540 and that time he had to uh, flee from there. Okay. So that time when he was going in the Rajput area, the Rana area, okay, Rana of Amarkot, he actually took shelter there and that is where Akbar actually was born. Okay. So Akbar was not born in Delhi or Agra, he was born in the western part of India, Okay. Amarkot in 1542. Okay. And uh, when Humayun uh, fled to Iran, young Akbar was captured by his uncle Kamran. Okay, this Kamran and all we discussed in the last chapter. Okay, in my previous video, he is there. This character is there. So same way, he actually captured Akbar and he treated the child well. Akbar was reunited with his parents after the capture of Kandahar. So you know, Humayun will come back, right? 1545, after Sher Shah, after Is uh, Islam Shah, and after the weak rulers of uh, Sur dynasty, uh, he will come back. So that time, after he captured Kandahar and all, Humayun will uh, take, uh, will be reunited with his son. Okay. So that time he has a foster mother and all that we'll see that Ronald will come and in the movie it is shown. So if you see that movie, at least the beginning of that movie, one hour, whatever I'm telling in this chapter will be like visually registered in your mind. Okay, that is how movies are always important for history. For modern history also at least 20 movie names I think I showed you, okay, with the pictures and all. So here because we are doing PDF and it's not a PPT, I'm not able to show much pictures, okay. So still try to watch that movie. So Again here, Akbar uh, was at uh, Kalanaur in the Punjab, okay, Punjab one place and uh, commanding operations against the Afghan rebels there. He was crowned at Kalanaur in 1556. That is the first image which I showed you, that 13 year old kid, okay, at the young age of 13 years. Okay, then Akbar succeeded to a difficult position. The Afghans were still strong beyond Agra. 
and were regrouping their forces under the leadership of Hemu for a final showdown. Okay, this Hemu is the opposite person actually in the Panipat War, second Panipat War. The first Panipat War was actually long back, okay, 1526 when uh, Babur uh, defeated Ibrahim Lodi and established the Mughal Empire. But this is 1556, again in the place, same place Panipat, okay. That's actually a history optional question, like why all the wars were happening in Panipat, okay. So UPC has this habit of asking very strange questions. Uh, last year, I think they asked like, uh, what if Gandhiji is not there? There is, a, there is no person like Gandhiji then how will be the uh, freedom struggle of India. So UPS is asking questions which you cannot find in books. Okay, You have to imagine a situation and then with the knowledge you have about the other things you have to make up an answer. Okay, And obviously everybody's answer will differ also. So that is what UPS is trying to do throughout the year. So how much ever you prepare, UPS is going to play that trick. Okay, So be prepared for that. So here, um, Hemu for final showdown. Now Kabul had been attacked and besieged. Sikandar Shur, the defeated Afghan ruler, was loitering in the Shivalik Hills. You know geography when you learn, you will know Shivalik Hills, the innermost uh, Himalayas kind of thing. Okay. So, however, Behram Khan, the tutor of the prince and a loyal and favorite officer of Humayun, rose to the occasion. He became the uh, Bakil of the kingdom with the title of Khani Khan. Okay. So, this also is important. In the movie also, you can see, uh, he will be calling him as Khan Baba. Okay. So, Khani Khan was the title which he took up and he is like the like kind of a godfather or who is actually uh, leading the kingdom in the um, time when the king is actually young okay the threat from the side of hemu was considered the most serious the area from chunar to the border of bengal was under the domination of uh, adil shah a nephew of sher shah okay so even though sher shah was defeated and all the kingdom was over still there were people there okay nephew was there hemu who had started life as a superintendent of the markets under islam shah Islam Shah is actually son of Sher Shah. Okay, so under him there was a person called Hemu, and he is the one who is now coming for the second Panipat War. Had rapidly risen under Adil Shah. He had not lost a single one of the 22 battles in which he had fought. Okay, so that is what about Hemu they are telling. Adil Shah had appointed him as the Bazir with the title of Vikramjit. So now these kind of things is what UPSC used to pick up. At least five years back, prelims they used to ask these kind of weird things. Okay, it's like Hemu is not like a very famous personality for us. Okay, in Indian context, but still UPSC used to ask it. So you have to know. Okay, so his uh, he was uh, appointed as a Bazir under Adil Shah and his title was Vikramjit. And the title of the other person, the Bairam Khan was uh, Khani, Khani Khanan. Okay, and uh, entrusted him with the task of expelling the Mughals. Hemu captured Agra and with an army of 50,000 cavalry, 500 elephants and a strong park of artillery marched upon Delhi. Okay, this is actually shown in the movie. Okay, a huge army uh, is what Hemu comes with, with a lot of elephants and all. And so they were, uh, Mughals were actually worried, okay, of how to defeat him. In a well-contested battle, Hemu defeated the Mughals near Delhi and occupied the city. However, Bairam Khan took energetic steps to meet the situation. His bold stand put new heart into his army and it marched on Delhi before Hemu could have time to consolidate his position. So, because of Bairam Khan's strategies, uh, they were actually able to fight back. The battle between the Mughals and the Afghan, uh, Afghan forces led by Hemu took place once again at Panipat, 5th November 1556. Okay. Although Hemu's artillery had been captured earlier by a Mughal detachment, the tide of battle was in favour of Hemu when an arrow hit him in the eye and he fainted. Okay, So this actually is exact same thing is shown in the movie. Okay, One of the um, soldier will be like hitting with an arrow on his eye and he will fa uh, uh, fall down and he was taken to Akbar. Okay, Akbar, the 13 year old kid. Uh, kid. But uh, the kid will tell like he is already defeated, I cannot kill him. But uh, Bairam Khan will kill him. Okay, So that is how from young age Akbar is seeing the atrocities of uh, Bairam Khan. Even though they won the war, he wants to kill also. He wants to kill the opposite ruler also. Okay, so this scene you can see in the movie. Okay, the leaderless Afghan army was defeated. Hemu was captured and executed. Okay, so that scene, execution scene, you can see. The Akbar had virtually uh, to reconquer his empire. Okay, so even though Akbar is not fighting the war or something, he is the ruler, right? So in his name, this victory will come. Okay, so that was the beginning. Okay, first war you can tell. Now early phase of okay, 1556 to 67. Bairam Khan remained at the helm of the affairs of the empire for almost four years. Okay. During the period, he kept the nobility uh, fully under control. The danger to Kabul was averted and the territories of the empire was extended from Kabul up to Jaunpur in the east. Okay, Jaunpur, you know, Sher Shah's place, okay, in the east, near Bihar and Ajmer in the west. So, it had a huge extent and uh, Bairam Khan was in charge. Gwalior was captured and vigorous efforts were made to conquer Rathambore and Malwa in the uh, western side. Meanwhile, Akbar was approaching the age of maturity. Bairam Khan had offended many powerful persons while he held supreme power. They complained that Bairam Khan was a Shia and that he was appointing his own supporters and Shias to uh, high officers like neglecting the old nobles. So here this also was one complaint against Bairam Khan. Okay. 
his atrocities is there already there which i told you but he is also using his religion also he is a shia member and so he is appointing shias into his office or who, uh, any powerful post and all okay these charges were not very serious in themselves but bairam khan had become arrogant and failed to release realize that akbar was growing up there was friction on small points which made akbar realize that he could not leave the affairs of the state in someone else's hand for any length of time so akbar now when he is growing up he understood like he cannot allow this to continue okay akbar played his cards deftly he left agra on the pretext of hunting and reached delhi from delhi he issued a farman dismissing bairam khan from his office okay so this is what is told here in this book in that uh, uh, a movie what it's showing like directly in a battleground some other battleground uh, uh, he is telling to him okay you can retire and now go to mecca okay that is what is shown in the movie okay uh, the hero will be uh, hrithik roshan he will be telling akbar character he will be telling to this uh, bairam khan character this thing okay you can retire now you have done enough uh, service for this thing you can retire and go back to mecca okay so uh, friction is being shown okay so here uh, here if you see it's like uh, i think they'll be given yeah here the rebellion distracted the empire for almost 6 months so this thing when akbar told like uh, you have to stay step back he was ready actually okay but his uh, you know like people will be there around okay like uh, the nobility and people they simply uh, what to say kept on uh, provoking him bairam khan against akbar and then there was a small friction around 6 months is continue finally bairam khan was forced to submit akbar for uh, forced to submit to akbar okay akbar received forced to submit okay there's a full stop here now akbar received him cordially and gave him the option of serving at the court or anywhere outside it or retiring to mecca so this is what is written here but in the movie directly is telling like you can go to mecca okay i mean your services are not required you can go to mecca so this is what happened okay but here again one thing bairam khan chose to go to mecca however on the way he was assassinated at pathan near ahmedabad by an afghan who bore him a personal grudge so some personal reasons he was killed by some other person okay so that's how his story will end and here again bairam khan's wife right wife and a young son was actually brought to akbar and akbar will marry that widow okay but these things are not shown in the movie because that movie is in the context of uh, joda akbar love story so they are not showing any other wife or any other such personal things of akbar is not shown in the movie okay so don't confuse movie scripts with the uh, actual history okay so here uh, bairam khan's widow who was his uh, cousin uh, brought up the child as his own son okay so whatever these are personal things we don't need and the son's name is this thing abdur rahim uh, khani khan khani khan is the father's uh, title and uh, held some of the most important offices and commands so his family was treated well in the empire that is the whole gist now akbar's confrontation with bairam khan and the treatment accorded to his family subsequently shows some typical traits of akbar's character okay he was underlyingly once he had made up his mind about a course of action but he was prepared to go out of his way in being generous to an opponent who had submitted to him so he decided like bairam khan has to be expelled so that was done but he did not do that such things to his family okay bairam khan's family he treated them generously so that is about akbar's character traits they are telling okay now during bairam khan's rebellion groups and individuals in the nobility had become politically active okay this included akbar's foster mother uh, maham annaga or something in the movie it is telling mahamanga okay so that is the foster mother in the movie you can watch it and her relate uh, relations okay uh, because you know like he was not born in agra right so that time one mother was there who actually took care of him who brought him up okay so that lady is this mahamanga and uh, though mahamanga soon with uh, withdrew from politics her son adam khan was an impetuous young man okay so this is also shown in the movie adam khan one character is there who is like not very good in this uh, whatever like kingship or whatever he was always uh, doing some some mischiefs or something which is not suited for a uh, royal person okay so that is why he had a few uh, conflicts with akbar also and because uh, this mahamanga is like foster mother she used to recommend him like um, please make uh, this person this adam khan uh, into some role or give something like some uh, administrative power or something but akbar always used to uh, reject okay so this is what happened then uh, he assumed independent uh, as when sent to command an expedition against malwa removed from the command he laid claim to the post of the wazir and when this was not conceded he stabbed the acting wazir in his office okay so this is also shown in the movie zadam khan will go and because he wanted to be wazir so he will go and uh, stab the wazir okay with the uh, sword so akbar was enraged and had him thrown down from the parapet of the fort so that he died okay 1561 this is also showed in the movie okay he, that person is thrown from the top of the fort so he will fall down he does not die this again the soldiers will take him up one more time and then he he is thrown again so like that till he is dead he was thrown okay so that much uh, akbar was enraged and that scene is beautifully shown in the movie okay so however it has been it has it was many years before akbar was to establish his authority fully okay these are all in his young age only okay so the uzbeks formed a powerful group in the 
uh, nobility. They held important positions in eastern Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Malwa, okay, this Uzbeks. Although they had served the empire well by subduing the powerful Afghan groups in those areas, they had become arrogant and were defying the young ruler. Between 1561 and 1567, they broke out in rebellion several times, forcing Akbar to take the field against them. Each time, Akbar was induced to pardon them. So, this is what happened. These kind of small, small rebellions were happening from the eastern side. So, Akbar will like uh, control them also and then pardon them also. It's not like any strict uh, uh, thing is done. So, when they again rebelled in 1565, okay. Akbar was so exasperated that he vowed to make Jaunpur his capital. So now uh, anything will have a limit, right? So when it became 1565, by that time he decided like now he will make Jaunpur his capital so that that side can be controlled. Meanwhile, a rebellion by the Mirzas who were uh, Timurids and were related to Akbar by marriage through the areas west of modern Uttar Pradesh into confusion. So again, another group, okay, Mirzas is coming into picture. Encouraged by these rebellions, Akbar's half-brother, okay, Mirza Hakim, who had seized control of Kabul, advanced into Punjab and besieged Lahore. Okay, so western side like this, this Mirza group is going on. This Uzbek rebels formally proclaimed him their ruler. So now they, all, they both will come together, this Uzbek and Mirzas. This was the most serious crisis Akbar had to face since Hemu's capture of Delhi. Okay, you remember Hemu capture we discussed in the beginning of, beginning of this chapter. So after this, any serious crisis was there, was, it was this thing. Okay, this Mirzas plus Uzbek. However, Akbar's grit and a great amount of luck enabled him to triumph. From uh, Jaunpur, he marched to Lahore, okay, if you see, like east to west, okay, full uh, distance, uh, forcing Mirza Hakim to retire. Meanwhile, the rebellion of the Mirzas was crushed, the Mirzas fleeing to Malwa and thence to Gujarat. Akbar marched back from Lahore to Jaunpur, crossing the river Yamuna near Allahabad at, a high, Allahabad at the height of uh, rainy season. He surprised the rebels led by the Uzbek nobles and compelled, completely routed them. So, uh, don't uh, read this like traveling from here to there and all. I'm just reading it because j just to show you, okay. Finally, what happens is he will uh, take control of both these people, okay, Mirzas and Uzbeks both. Uzbek leaders were killed in the battle, thus bringing their protect, uh, protracted rebellion to an end. All the rebellious nobles, including those among them who had been dreaming of independence, were cowed down. Okay, so anybody who wanted to carve out independent kingdoms or who wanted to throw out Akbar, anything, okay, everything was done, uh, done away with and Akbar was now free to concentrate on the expansion of the empire. Okay, so now up to 67 we saw, okay, now after 67, up to 76, one more thing is there, that after this we will stop this chapter, okay, this video. Uh, then after that it will continue, it will go on till his death or something, so we will see step by step only. So during Bairam Khan's uh, regency, the territories of the Mughal Empire, had been expanded okay during the regency over territory of mughal empire had been expanded so telling about the previous thing then apart from ajmer the most important conquest during this period had been of malwa and garkatanga malwa was uh, being ruled at the time by a young prince okay baz Bahadur. so one more new character okay in the malwa region his accomplishments included a mastery of music and poetry poetry okay Stories about the romance of Bas Bahadur and Rukmati, who was famous for beauty as well as for music and poetry, were well known. So again, this kind of things usually we used to ignore. Okay, whenever we read history textbooks, but UPSC have started asking these kind of things also. Uh, 2016 or 17, I don't remember. They asked a question about uh, some love story about some king and someone, and a book actually. Okay, which book is based on the love story between two people? Okay, so when you read these things, you have to at least. Keep in mind, like, okay, I read this at least in the medieval portion. Don't confuse, like, okay, this was in ancient history or this was in the time of Guptas or something. At least you should know this Bas Bahadur Rukmati thing is happening in the medieval time during the Akbar's time. Okay, that is how you uh, reduce your knowledge to a proper limit. Okay, or if you holistically simply memorize this, you will forget which type, which part of the timeline you learned it. Okay, so Bas Bahadur and Rukmati, something in Malwa region is going on, uh, famous for music and poetry. During his time, uh, Mandu had become a celebrated center for music okay this place in last uh, video also we saw the army however had been neglected by Bas Bahadur the expedition against Malwa was led by Adam Khan okay that uh, foster mother's son okay Adam Khan son of okay here it's mentioned Mahamanga Bas Bahadur was badly defeated 1561 and the Mughals took valuable spoils including Rukmati okay so he was defeated and his uh, this love with this person Rukmati also was taken and the valuables also was taken however she preferred to commit suicide to being dragged to Adam Khan's harad. Due to this senseless cruelties of Adam Khan and his successor, there was a reaction between the Mughals uh, against the Mughals, which enabled Bas Bahadur to recover Malwa. Okay, so it's Adam Khan's uh, uh, policies is not uh, suiting to Akbar's policy, right? So that is why they had their internal conflict. And meanwhile, uh, this Bas Bahadur was able to recover the place. Okay, whichever was lost was got back. Okay, after dealing with uh, Bairam Khan's rebellion, Akbar sent another expedition to Malwa. Bas Bahadur had to flee and for some time he took shelter under the Rana of, the Rana of Mewa. 
After wandering about from one area to another, he finally repaired to Akbar's court and was enrolled as a Mughal Mansabdar. Okay, so this person who was running around uh, because of fear of Akbar, he finally will come back. Okay, and will join Akbar's court. And you know, there is a concept called Mansabdar. Mansabdar is actually a kind of a rank. Okay, like a Mansabdar of a 500 rank, of 2000 rank, 3000 rank. So higher, higher the rank, higher number it will be allotted. Okay, so that uh, place he joined. The extensive country of uh, Malwa thus came under Mughal rule. Okay, so that's how Malwa story ends. Okay, Bagbadu story. Uh, at about the same time, Mughal arms overran the kingdom of Garkatanga. The kingdom of Garkatanga included the Narmada Valley and the northern provinces of present Madhya Pradesh. Okay, so now after Gujarat, we are seeing the Madhya Pradesh area. It had been uh, welded together by one Amandas. Okay, so now Bas Bahadur is in Malwa, Amandas is in Madhya Pradesh. Okay, who flourished in the second half of 15th century. Amandas had helped Bahadur Shah of Gujarat in the conquest of Raisin and had received from him the title of Sangram Shah. Okay, so this now its full story is about Amandas. Okay, Amandas is. Uh, in this place and he's helping Badur Shah. Badur Shah of Gujarat we saw uh, while Humayun had problems with him. Okay. So this Aman Shah, uh, sorry, Aman Das got the title of Sangram Shah. Okay. Try to remember, I know it's difficult to remember each and every title and all, but if you just make notes and if you solve similar MCQs, because in our MCQ these things will be again covered. So that's what you need to do. Listen to lectures which are free, then enroll to that uh, paid uh, test series, which are like the best in the country, I can tell. Okay. We have covered everything which is there in standard textbook. So once you do that, it will be like you will never forget these things okay because everyone will not buy hard this so you have to be one step ahead of them and that is what we are trying here Vaisha EA students should be always one step ahead of the other students who are following the regular channels or the normal daily materials okay daily coaching materials but we are giving you everything which is extensive so try to memorize here uh, actually on top near Mansabdar you can see here one number one is given so here this is actually explanation to that he rose to the rank of 2000 I told you the rank will be like uh, with different numbers okay 2000 so according to tradition he was buried near a tank at Ujjain where his favorite consort Rupmati was also buried so uh, this is what Akbar will do like he will make sure that he is not hurting any opponents or something okay whoever comes to his refuge will be taken care so just telling about his story how it ended okay so this uh, Amanda story about Narmada Valley was going on and we uh, read till title of Sangram Shah okay now kingdom of uh, Garkatanga included a number of Gaunt and Rajput principalities. It was the most powerful kingdom set up by the Gaunts. It is said that the ruler commanded 20,000 cavalry, uh, large infantry and 1,000 elephants. We do not know however to which, what extent these figures are dependable. Sangram Shah had further strengthened his position by marrying off his son to a princess of the famous Sandila ruler. So again this internal marriage alliance something is there and these people are expanding their uh, cavalry and kingdom and all. Okay, So here again one new princess name is Durgavati. Okay, There we had that Rupmati thing, this is now Durgavati. Okay. So became a widow soon afterwards, but she installed her minor son on the throne and ruled the country with great vigor and courage. She was a good marksman, both with guns and bow and arrows. She was fond of hunting. And uh, according to her contemporary, it was her custom that whenever she heard that a tiger had appeared, she did not drink water till she had shot it. So there are exaggerations of stories which they are telling, like uh, she was good in this hunting, bow and arrow, all these things. And so if she spotted a tiger, she will not uh, do anything else before she kills that tiger. Okay, so that kind of thing. So she fought many successful battles against her neighbors, including Bas Bahadur of Malwa. These border conflicts apparently continued even after Malwa had been conquered by the Mughals. Okay, so even after Mughals capturing Malwa, these people had internal conflicts also. Malwa was this uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh region, okay, Narmada Valley region. Now, meanwhile, the cupidity of Asaf Khan, the Mughal governor of Allahabad, so a new character now, okay, uh, governor of Allahabad, was roused by the stories of the fabulous wealth and the beauty of the Rani. Asaf Khan advanced with 10,000 cavalry from the state of Bundelkhand. Some of the independent, semi independent rulers of Gara found it a convenient moment to throw off the gaunt yoke. The Rani was thus left with a small force. So, this is all again, I don't think it's very important because these people, governors, uh, going behind queue and then getting wealth and all these things are happening all the time, it will happen. Okay, I don't know why it's like mentioned in this much detail. So, again, something happens and I think she will see stabbed herself to death. Okay, she will die. Asaf Khan then stormed the capital. Okay, some Chauraga, some near modern Jabalpur. So much plunder in jewels, gold, silver, and other things were taken. Uh, impossible to compute says Abul Fazal. Abul Fazal you will see later the Navratnas of Akbar, one of the person. Okay. That's also one good thing in that movie. In that movie the Navratnas will be shown. Okay. The nine people. You should know about them because you basically have asked about them in the past. Okay. Uh, Birbal, Tansen, Abul Fazal, uh, many people who wrote his books and all. Okay. Artists or many things. Many people were there. Nine people were there. So out of all the plunder, Asaf Khan sent only 200 elephants to the court and retained all the rest for himself. 
Kamala Devi, the eldest sister of the Rani, was sent to the court. So again, see, the, this is like family politics kind of thing. Just understand the story. That's all. Okay. When Akbar had dealt with the rebellion of the Uzbek nobles, he forced Asaf Khan to discharge. Discards his illegal gains. He restored the kingdom of Garkatanga to Chandra Shah, the youngest son of Sangram Shah. Uh, Sangram Shah, you know that Amandas or someone, okay. After taking ten forts to round up the kings of kingdom of Malwa. Again, Akbar, it's like the fools. They will tell some story and finally they will tell they did some atrocities and finally Akbar will make it all correct. Okay, that is what they are, Satish Chandra is trying to do in these last two incidents which we are learning. Both have, is both like the justice same, okay. So during the next ten years, Akbar brought the major part of Rajasthan under his control and also conquered Gujarat and Bengal. A major step in the campaign against the Rajput states, states was the siege of Chittor. The redoubtable fortress which had faced a number of sieges in the history was considered a key to central Rajasthan. You know this Chittor fort is there in the Alauddin Khilji story also. Okay, So that's what they are telling. It's like in history also it's mentioned a number of times for uh, different attacks. Now it commanded the shortest route from Agra to Gujarat. But above all, it was a symbol of the Rajas Rajput spirit of resistance. Akbar realized that without conquering Chittu, he could not induce the other Rajput rulers to accept his society. Then uh, Chittor fell 1568. Okay, now 15, up to 1567 we had seen some stories. Now 1568 Chittor also is caught after a uh, gallant siege of six months. At the advice of the nobles, Rana Uday Singh had retired to the hills, leaving the famous warriors Jamal and Pata in charge of the fort. Many peasants from the surrounding area had also taken shelter within the fort and actively aided the defenders. When the Mughals stormed the fort, these peasants and many of the Rajput warriors were massacred. The first and the last time Akbar indulged in such a carriage. Okay, so it's like this thing, uh, peasants were all killed because of this thing. But so it's telling me Akbar first and last time he did such an atrocious thing, okay, attacking these common people because he needed Chitor. The Rajput warriors died after extracting as much vengeance as possible. In honor of the gallant Jamal and Pata, Akbar ordered that two stone statues of these warriors seated on elephants be erected outside the chief gate of the fort of Agra. Okay, I don't know whether such thing exists now, so whoever has visited this place can uh, maybe can tell it, okay, like such uh, where the statues are there. Uh, the fall of Chittor was followed by the conquest of Ratham, Rathambore, reputed to be the most powerful fortress in Rajasthan. Jodhpur had been conquered earlier. As a result of these victories, most of the Rajput Rajas, including those of Bikaner and Jaisalmer, submitted to Akbar. Only Mewa continued to resist. So almost all the uh, Rajput kingdoms, the Bikana, Jaisalmer, Jodhpur, whatever is there, it's like one by one coming under Akbar's thing, Akbar's uh, rule. And only this Mewa was there who continued to resist. Okay. Now Gujarat had been in a sorry state of affairs since the death of Badur Shah. We learnt about de in detail about Badur Shah and his fight with uh, Humayun and all. So now after that, it's like in a sorry state. Means it's like uh, not in good condition. Okay. The fertility of its soil, its highly developed craft and its importance as a centre of import-export trade with the outside world had made it a prize worth fighting for fighting for okay so these are the good characteristics okay even now Gujarat has these kind of things okay this uh, craft work import export trade route to the dockyard the port everything okay right from Indus Valley civilization time we know the area around Gujarat is famous for these things so that is why Akbar decided to fight for that also so Akbar also laid claim to it because Humayun had ruled over it for some time an additional reason for was that the Mirzas who had failed in their rebellion near Delhi had taken shelter in Gujarat okay uh, Akbar was not prepared for such a rich province to become a rival centre of power. In 1572, Akbar advanced on Ahmedabad via Ajmer. Ahmedabad surrendered without a fight. Akbar then turned his attention to the Mirzas who held uh, Baroj, Baroda, Surat. At Camp Bay, Akbar saw the sea for the first time and rode on it in a boat. So, they just, wish, just to create a visual impact, maybe he is writing all these things. Okay, so saw the sea for the first time and uh, going in a boat and all these things. A group of Portuguese, merch, Portuguese merchants also came and met him for the first time. The Portuguese dominated the Indian seas by this time and had the ambition of establishing an empire in India. Akbar's conquest of Gujarat frustrated these designs. Okay, so this they are uh, now telling about the Akbar versus a foreigners thing. Okay, he went to Gujarat not seeing the foreigners or something. He went there because he did not want to lose out a rich province. Okay, but that time, by that time, you know the time, 1570s. Okay, this like Britishers have not come. So Portuguese are the strongest people that time. So Portuguese we had taken control of the sea and also, but Akbar's thing, this conquest did not appease them. Okay, they were frustrated by these things. Now, while Akbar's army were uh, besieging Surat, Akbar crossed the river Mahi and assaulted the 
uh, Ms. Das with a small body of 200 men which included Man Singh and Bhagwan Das of Amber. For some time Akbar's life was in danger but the impetuosity of his charge routed the Mirzas. So now this final Mirzas who were left know that also is going to be controlled. Thus Gujarat came under Mughal control. However as soon as Akbar had turned his back rebellions broke out all over Gujarat. Hearing the news Akbar marched out of Agra and traversed across Rajasthan in 9 days by mounds of camels, horses and carts. On the 11th day he reached Ahmedabad. In this journey which normally took 6 weeks only 3000 soldiers were able to keep up with Akbar. So again telling like uh, controlled he went away but again some rebellions happened he is coming back with some force. Okay. Okay. After this Akbar turned his attention to Bengal. The Afghans had continued to dominate Bengal and Bihar. Okay. They had also overrun Orissa and killed its ruler. However, in order not in order not to give offence to the Mughals, the Afghan ruler had not formally declared himself king but read the uh, Khuba in Akbar's name. Okay. Kuba, Kutba, or what the, I don't know. So internal fights among the Afghans and the declaration of independence by a new ruler, Daud Khan, gave Akbar the opportunity he was seeking. So again, whatever is happening in the Bengal, Bihar, Odisha region, they are telling. Okay. So Akbar advanced with a strong flotilla of boats accompanying him. The Afghan king was believed to possess a large army consisting of 40,000 well-mounted cavalry and infantry of about 1,50,000 several. I don't know why this is too much being stressed. Okay. So like that. Afghan, sorry, Akbar had not been as careful as the Af Afghans but a better leader. The contest between Humayun and Sher Shah might well have been repeated. Okay, so this Humayun versus Sher Shah, that is Agra versus the eastern side, same way now Akbar versus Afghans is going on. Akbar first captured Patna, thus securing Mughal communications in Bihar. He then returned to Agra, leaving Khani Khanan uh, Munaim Khan, an experienced officer in charge of the campaign. Okay, the Mughal armies invaded Bengal and after Hard campaigning, Daud was forced to sue for peace. He rose in rebellion soon afterwards. Though in Mughal position in Bengal and Bihar was still weak, the Mughal armies were better organized and led. In a stiff battle in Bihar in 1576, Daud Khan was defeated and executed on the spot. Thus ended the last Afghan kingdom in northern India. It also brought to an end the first phase of Akbar's expansion of the empire. Okay, so like this in a proper ending we will stop this. Okay like this it's like totally expansion stories but next uh, i think next year next is administration right so next will be important because of prelims uh, many questions have come this uh, land revenue policies his uh, uh, cropping pattern that the sala system then uh, thodar mal is there this uh, financial aid personality many things are there which is important for prelims so that will i do in the next chapter because if you mix this political thing with economic thing it will be not what is easily understandable for students who are very new to history okay so whatever we discuss now in gs1 i don't expect any question okay but for history option direct question can come okay the rise of Akbar or the conflict between Akbar and different uh, this people this Gujarat and Malwa and oh, we saw some other places like Ma uh, Madhya Pradesh or with Bairam Khan what was his thing or with his foster mother or with that uh, son of foster mother there are different angles in which UPC can frame questions okay they can ask 5 marker 10 marker 12 marker they can ask any question but it's all in history optional okay in the places the places name also this Mandu, Chunar we are seeing lot of places these places name also in the history optional it's important for GS1 you just need to know the whole story like how it started in case you need it you can use it but 90 percentage question will not come it will come only culture aspect will come which we will see in the next few chapters okay uh, Akbar's cultural aspect Akbar's uh, coinage or whatever that and all will come in the next part so here I think uh, some MCQs might be there one second okay one question we will see what all are true regarding Akbar Akbar's territory included Kashmir and Kandahar Akbar entered into marriage alliance with the Rajputs. Akbar had captured forts at Rathambur and Sittor. Akbar was tolerant towards all religions. So this is like very basic question. I think I picked it up because we are just starting with Akbar. That's why it's like very basic statement. So I think two or three statements you will directly understand it is true. Okay. And here in options also if you see the statement number two is there and everything. Okay. So that is true anyway. Uh, marriage alliance with Rajput, you know, like Jodhak movie itself, you, you would have seen. So, other things, try whether everything is correct or any mistake is there. Okay, so uh, this is about this first chapter, beginning of Akbar. Uh, try to uh, uh, watch it one more time if you want it and make notes. Okay, history optional students especially make notes. And uh, all these things in detail, prelims perspective and means perspective in our test series, it is covered extensively. So, try to enroll that also. You can drop an email to this particular email ID. Okay, for that. So I will come with the next video soon, give you a feedback so that I will know whether I have to continue this or not or it is like a waste of time okay. If students don't want it then it's, I can do something else. So give your feedback, thank you and have a nice day.